Once again, we welcome you to worship at Christ Church. Whether you're watching online with us right now or sometime later, or you're here in the room, we welcome you to this time. We do pray and hope that it is a time of worship for you, a time of fellowship, a time of connection, both with each other as we seek to be the people of Christ and with God as we seek to represent this God out in our everyday lives. We're glad that you're here for this. Let me remind you of a couple things coming up. Uh, first of all, uh, the August pantry pileup. This is a, we do a different pantry pileup each month. Last year in August, we connected with another church down the street who has a snack pack ministry. That's where they send food home on Fridays with children who don't have very much food at home. And so we, uh, last year we collected ramen noodles and we had a goal of 10,000 and you knocked that out of the park, it was 17,000 that we collected. So we've upped the ante this year. We're instead collecting this year individual packs of instant oatmeal and our goal is 20,000 of those packs. So we invite you to pray about that. As you go out shopping, you can of course get those in bulk and bring those in over the next couple of Sundays. We need those in by August 27th and we'll get those distributed and thank you for the way that you are so generous in those kinds of things. One of the ways that we reach out in our community is through the Good News Club at Westview Elementary. Uh, this church has been a part of this, been leading this and offering this to children there at Westview for the last number of years. It's a group that meets after school and uh, last year I understand there was like 70 children participating in this. We're needing leaders and volunteers to help out with that. There'll be a training on August 19th. So if you wanna come and just kind of check that out and see if that's something you can do and wanna be a part of, you can do that. There's contact information for Bev Thompson who is the coordinator for us. Either her phone number or email address is there or you can contact her office and they'll get you in touch with her. This Saturday morning, our men's ministry will have their quarterly breakfast uh, D. Cody and his crew will be preparing a, a hearty breakfast for us. And this, the program this time is very, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Steve, some of you know Steve Brandon, a member of our church. He and his wife travel extensively around the world and love to photograph nature. And he's got just some marvelous, in fact, he's titled this program, Photographing Nature on Seven Continents. So guys, we invite you to come, bring a friend with you. We do need you to register for that. Go to our website, you can register there, let us know how many's coming so we'll know how many to prepare breakfast for. We hope to see you Saturday morning, 8.30 over in the gym. As always, we ask you to let us know of your participation in this service. If you're watching online, you can do that on the app. You can also do that on the app here. If you're in the room, you can do that at the doorway. And sometimes I forget to mention that also there on that pad of paper at the doorway, if you've got a prayer request of any kind, you can leave that there. And we've got a team of people that pray weekly for those people on that list. And so if you've got something you'd like for us to be praying about, please add that to the list. Once again, it's time for Miss Mary Beth as she's got another message for the children. Hello and welcome to Children's Moment. I'm Mary Beth Hammett, the Children's Ministry Director at Christ, and I am so glad that you have joined me today. So kids, gather around and let's just chat for a minute. Quick question for everybody. Do you like to get mail in the mailbox? I know things come by email and text and all that kind of thing, but I got a, a card in the mail just the other day, and it was just a card from a friend that was an encouragement card, and it just made my day. I don't know about you, but I still like to get mail in the mailbox sometimes. Um, all the other stuff, that's fine either way, but special cards coming in the mail, it's really cool. You know, my granddad was a mail carrier a long, long, long time ago, and he took his job very seriously because he was getting information into the hands of people. Well, you know, Jesus gave us a very important mission as well for us to share his good news with others. And it's not something that we just do if we feel like it or if we think about it, but it's important. And he wants us to be doing that all the time as people who love him and follow him. So this week, think about ways that you can share the good news with people. Maybe it's inviting them to church. Maybe it's telling them how important God is to you. Maybe it's sending them a card in the mail. There's lots of different ways that you can share the good news 
even most importantly is loving others that's definitely the top one so this week look for ways to share jesus with others i'll see you next time good morning let's stand and say hello to each other but before you do everyone look back and wave at scott in the back
God of covenant, of faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain. Sun to the setting, same I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. Last week we had a really good night of a movie night. You all can be seated. And also a, a movie night. This was a great opportunity, not only for us to have fun and enjoy it, but it was a good time to invite the community to come, to get to know us, 
uh, to see some of our children's ministry things that are coming up and also to learn about our worship times. We promote things like that saying it's free, no charge, and we can only do that because of your generosity and your giving. Thank you for that. There's a number of ways you can give. You can drop your offering in the boxes in the atrium. You can always send in a check or go online and give through the app or the website. Would you bow with me now as we go to God in prayer? Heavenly Father, we sing this morning of your great faithfulness, and we're so sincere in that. We know how faithful you are to us. Sometimes when we're in a difficult time, we kind of forget that. We confess that we wonder where you are. You may seem distant to us. And yet, when we get through that time and we look back, we realize you were there all along. So thank you for your great faithfulness. At this time, as school years are about to start, staff and teachers have been gathering to prepare, to get ready for the year. We thank you for school teachers who are kind of in youth and children's ministry as they reach out and shape young lives and uh, to train and teach. We ask that you give them wisdom and courage in these challenging times to do their work in the classroom as if they're serving you. Bless every student who comes this year. Give them a good school year. As each of us go about doing our work, no matter how secular our career, help us to do that work as if we do it for you. And as we find the opportunity, help us to be good witnesses in the workplace. There are special needs among us today uh, within our families, within our church, and we pray for your blessings for those who grieve, those who are ill, those making tough decisions. You've given a message for us to Pastor Nathan. We ask that you bless him now as he comes to bring that message to us. And now we pray together here and in our homes, our Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before I share the message with you today, I want to make you aware of an event coming up at First Centenary United Methodist Church this Saturday morning from 10 o'clock till 12 o'clock. It's titled Creation Care, The Biblical Calling, Spiritual and Practical Ways to Love God's Creation. It'll be in their, what they call their Oak Street Center. It's a building out behind the main campus, for those of you who are familiar with it. Two young women from that church will be the presenters for the morning, and I encourage you, those of you who have an interest in this to attend and support them. You can do that either in person or online, and if you choose to do that by Zoom, just contact our office and we can get that link to you. Now, full disclosure here, this is a United Women in Faith event, but I am confident, I am sure that they will not kick out any men who attend. I can almost promise you that. So guys, you can come to breakfast here at 8.30 and hear and see what Steve Brandon has to offer and then go down there and support those ladies. And I believe that what Steve's going to share is very much connected to what they're going to share. So I hope to see you there. Little words that say a lot. A couple of months ago, as I was praying about and trying to discern seeking God's guidance for what God would have me share in sermons during August, I was intrigued and kind of playing around with the two and three and maybe even four-letter words, good words, uh, in our language that carry a big punch. They say a lot. Um, they, uh, maybe words like even yes and no. Uh, some of us need to to step up and say yes to the opportunities that God puts out there before us. And then the word no, it can also be very powerful in our life when we're willing to say it when those temptations come our way. No, no. 
There were other words like do and now and can and for, F-O-R, that were on my list. But the more I played around with that and the more I prayed about it, it was as if the Holy Spirit led me to just three words to focus in on this morning to share with you. And I was given a particular order in which to put those words, and then we'll change the order before we finish. Here we go. The first word is be. Just be. B-E. In a world that focuses on valuing people only for what they can do, the God who gave all of us life invites us to first experience life just being. The first Bible verse that came to my mind about this was Psalm 46, verse 10, and actually it's just a part of that verse. God says through the psalmist, be still and know that I am God. You see, if the first point of focus for us, if the, if the core of our being in life is focused on what we can do, on the capabilities that God gave us in the first place, we can get to thinking that we're God, that we can fend for ourselves, that, that we're in charge. And when we do that, we make a huge mess of things, as you know. So again, God invites us to first just be, to enjoy life, to know that God loves you and me and everybody else. One of Jesus' lessons about life was that we were not to be anxious about it. And he pointed to the birds of the air and the flowers in the field, and, and, he, and he said, notice how God cares for them. God wants us to rest and relax into God's care for us. Now, when I think about that, I think about children playing freely, playing in an unstructured environment. Those of you who know me know that I love sports, and I, and I encourage children and teenagers to play in those settings that have rules and structure and teach you all kinds of good lessons about life. But parents, please make sure those children also have some time to just play freely. I love this picture. I can remember times a child playing in the yard at our house and in the tree out front playing in the woods behind grandpa and grandma's house, playing with other children in the neighborhood. And here's another great picture. Children just enjoying each other and enjoying life. That's a big part of what it means to just be. And so often as we get older, as we grow into adulthood, we lose that. Becky and David Hall got to go to the beach this past week and spend some time with their daughter and her family, and that meant spending time with those grandsons. David sent us this picture of Becky and the boys out in the edge of the water. I love that picture. Becky, most of you know that Becky has a lot of responsibility. She does a lot here in the life of this church and, and the church on a, on a larger level. And I celebrate for her and with her at having this moment just to be, to enjoy that scene of the beauty and jaw-dropping vastness of God's creation at the ocean, to put her feet in the water. I, I was able to focus in, go her in real close, and I can assure you her feet are in the water. To spend time with those grandsons she loves so much. Yes, part of learning what it means to just be is to spend time with other people, especially those closest to us. We also need time alone. Here's another great picture, someone enjoying the beauty of God's creation in a different setting. We need those times to be alone, not just to be still and know that God is God, but to be still with God. God. May I say that again? We need those times alone, not just to know that God is God, but to be still with God. To spend time in the silence. To talk with this Holy Spirit as we would talk with our best friend. To share our greatest joys and our greatest fears. But most of all, 
to just be with this creator who gave us life and who through Jesus has shown us a love that is greater than any we will ever know. For many of us, we simply need to detach from the television and our tech devices more often. On our recent vacation time, Vicki and I were able to spend some, a couple of days with some friends up in Virginia. They live out away from the bright lights of the city and, and on our first night there, we were out on the back patio looking up at the stars in the sky. Now, we didn't get to see this many stars. That's more of a camera function there. But it was just so relaxing and restful to just be out there and looking up in the sky. And I was reminded as I did that, I need to do this more often. I don't know about you. I'm reminded of any time I look up at the sky, especially at night, I'm reminded of looking at the ocean as well. And, and I'm reminded of how mind-blowing huge this universe is. And that I'm just a little speck in it. But as the psalmist said about uh, that very kind of situation, he also said, God has made us a little lower than the angels. So before you feel the need to do anything in your relationship with God, just be. Know that your beginning relationship with God is to just be, to be who you are, to be the person God created you to be. Then and only then comes the next word that the Spirit gave me to share. Go. Go from where you are, go from who you are, go out there to explore beyond just who you are in your experience in life. There's a vast creation out there. There's a vast understanding out there among other people. In Matthew's gospel, after Jesus was resurrected, he met with his disciples one last time and gave them their mission, and it starts with that word, go. Go make disciples of all people. But before that, he had spent three years with them, teaching them what it meant to just be disciples. They saw how his teaching was different than the other rabbis of that time and place. They experienced what it looked like to seek after the least, to seek after the least, the last, the lonely, the lost. They watched him relate to his heavenly father and heard him assure them that they could have the same kind of relationship with God. I'm also reminded that the word go is a prominent word in that story back there in Genesis 12 where God, it's as if God starts all over with the humans, wants to start something new and says to a man named Abram, go, go from where you are Go to a place that I'll show you. And even as he changed his name and traveled with him, covenanted with him, he taught Abraham as he went what it meant to represent this God in this world, what it meant to be God's people. I believe God calls all of us to go, not only to new places and new experiences, but to new understandings and new thinking. In Matthew's gospel, several times Jesus says, and, and what we know is the Sermon on the Mount, several times Jesus says, you have heard that it was said, but I say to you, as a way of inviting them to go beyond what they had understood before at that point. For example, one of the first ones he said is basically, don't think it's enough in God's eyes that you can say, I've never killed anybody. Understand that you can use words and other actions that kill the spirit of somebody. So learn to control your anger because it can motivate you to do all kinds of harm to others, even with just your words. The first word is be. The next word's go. The third word that I was given is with. W-I-T-H, with. The last words from Jesus in Matthew's gospel is a wonderful promise, maybe the greatest promise that he could ever give any of us. I will be with you always. It's one of those themes that shows up again and again throughout the Bible. 
God never sends us out to do something without also assuring us that the Spirit who is God goes with us. When God called Moses to go face Pharaoh in Egypt and demand that he let God's people go, Moses was also given examples of how God would go with him and give him the power that he would need to carry out his assignment. And after the death of Moses, God called on Joshua to lead the people on into the promised land, assuring him as well that God's presence and guidance would be with him. So we start out with this order of the words, be, then go, and then with. In that order, they stand alone and have specific meanings that we've looked at. Now we're going to change the order. Now the order is go, be, with. Here the words come together to remind us of our mission. Here again the words of Jesus at that end of the Gospel of Matthew. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Bishop Gregory Palmer was guest bishop and preacher at our Holston Annual Conference this past June. He's been serving as a bishop in the United Methodist Church now for 23 years, and since 2012 has, has been the bishop of the Ohio West Conference. Been a very good leader in the United Methodist Church, and he offered some very powerful sermons for us at Lake Junaluska. At one point in one of those sermons, he commented on this passage from Matthew's Gospel that really caught my attention. Uh, in his study of that passage, and particularly as he looked at the word go, he had something that he noticed that I hadn't noticed before. The Greek word that's used there is not like an imperative go as in being told to go somewhere specific or do something specific. The meaning of the word is better translated as you go. As you go, in your going, make disciples. In other words, as you go about your daily life, make disciples. It's not about just a certain time. We only do this in certain places. We only do this at certain times. We take certain courses or we go to specific. No, it's about everywhere, all the time with anybody. In your going, as you go, make disciples. In your workplace, make disciples. At your school, make disciples. In all of your relationships with your family, with your friends, with your enemies, whoever, wherever, make disciples. That's our calling. Let me, let me try this one other way to describe this. I'm guessing that each of you have had or hopefully still have a person or a family or a group of friends that you just, you love to be with, you enjoy. But anytime you're around that person or that family or that group of friends, you have a good time. Or you, it, it seems like every time you're with them, you learn something good. You learn something new. or You're challenged by them to be a better person. You want to be with them. I believe Jesus calls us to live our lives in such a way guided by the Holy Spirit, that people want to be with us, to learn, to know more about this Jesus, this God who we worship. So go be with people. First, be with this Holy Spirit who is God. Spend time with this Spirit just being. Just soaking up the presence of God and learning who God has created you to be. Learning um, what God seeks for you to see and hear and experience in your everyday life. Then you will be spiritually filled and ready to go be with people in such a way that you draw their interest in knowing this God we worship and serve. Be, go, with. 
three little bitty words that I believe say a lot all by themselves. And as a follower of Jesus Christ, when you understand what they mean by themselves in that order, then you're better ready to live what they mean in a different order. Go be with. Amen? Let's pray. God, we give you thanks that you came to be with us, that you still promise, Jesus promised us, that you'd always be with us, that we're never alone. And that first of all, you invite us just to rest in your arms, just to rest beside you, just to revel in being with you so that we're filled up. We're filled up with your presence. We soak in your presence. And then we can go. Then we're ready to go and be with others, knowing that you're with us, you're living in us, and that we can help others come to know you. Lord, continue to give us that thirst, that hunger, that desire to help others know you. Help us start by simply being with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand for a closing song and hear this invitation? If you're here today and would like to come and unite with the church or to give your heart to Christ, I'll be here on the front row and we'll be happy to help you with those. If you would like to talk about those things with me, my number is 402-0621. I'd like to get a call or a text.
There is no doubt, cause I have seen your faithfulness by fortress over and over. Would you bow with me? Almighty God, we have come into this place today to praise you and to worship you, and we felt your presence. We've sung of our faith. Now send us out to live that faith as your witnesses in Christ's name. Amen.